welcome back. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to do uh, some more of the book haul. Uh, if you're a subscriber of mine, you will know that uh, I think it was shortly before Christmas I uploaded a book haul, uh, which I accidentally deleted and have lost, so can't even re-upload. Um, but in that video, I said that I had uh, too many books to show in just one video and I would spread over two or possibly three videos. So this is basically just a continuation of that. So uh, if you saw the last video, this is part two. For everyone else, this is part one. Um, I'm, this is probably gonna be another two videos because since the last one was made, I have bought more and added them on. So this, this will be a never ending thing, probably. Definitely gonna be a never ending thing. Just, <laughs> I can't help it, I have a problem. But the place where I usually go, the place I tell you about that sells all the books for 75 pence, um, that's right next to the bus stop I get home from work, it's closed. It's all shut down. It's not there anymore. So I don't know where I'm going to get all my nice cheap books from anymore. But there we go. What are you going to do? Anyway, so I'm going to dive in and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about each book I would try and not ramble, but I'm already rambling and I've not even started showing you them yet. But uh, basically, I'm just going to talk about books and we'll just see how far into the video we get before it gets a bit long. And then we'll just end the video there and I'll show you the rest next time. So, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so the first one that I wanted to show you um, was if you saw my What I Got For Christmas video, um, I was showing you some books that I got for Christmas in that. And um, I mentioned that one of the books was missing. Uh, I'd left it at my mum's. Well, I have it back now. And it's by it's by my favourite big time YouTuber, uh, Gabby Hanna. Uh, she released a book called Adult Lessons. And it's really, it's just a collection of like her poetry and, and like kind of short, it's not even short stories, poetry, we'll just say poetry and just some drawings that she's done like that so that is clearly a woman tied up by her phone that was a that's an unfortunate page to open up at but there we go uh, i'm a huge huge fan of gabby she's my absolute favorite so when she brought out a book i thought i have to get it and asked my mammy to get it for me for christmas so got that thank you mammy Okay, now from the rest of the books, unless there's a sticker on it, I don't know where I got it from and I don't know how much it cost, so I'm sorry. But they've all came from the usual places, car boot sales, charity shops and places like that. So, there we go. Uh, this one here, okay. This one here, um, this one I got, I remember I got it about a week or so ago and I remember I got it from a cancer research shop, I'm sure. And it just caught my eye and I thought it was funny. Oh, get sore legs. And I thought it was funny. Uh, I hope it's a joke. I think it's a joke. And it's by Bunty Cutler and it's called 211 Things a Bright Girl Can Do. And as you can see, it looks kind of old and vintagey, but it's it's not. Um, and it looked funny and it made me laugh, so I got it. And it's basically full of life hacks and stuff like that for for women. And it's full of things like, let's see, how to give yourself a Brazilian wax. No, thank you. How to lose six pounds in six hours. Again, no, thank you. <laughs> and how to make a little black dress out of a bin liner. Sure, if you're feeling trashy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, that was really bad. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I just thought it was, it's just full of funny ones like that. There is one because I was kind of flicking through it when I got it and there's one that says um, how to deal with a snoring man. I thought that would be funny. Uh, so yeah, so I got that. It amused me and like I said, I, th I think it's a joke. I hope it's a joke. Um, but yeah, it made me laugh so I got it. Okay, and... So those are the two I 100% wanted to show you in this video. The rest I'm literally just reaching in, grabbing, like that. Okay. So uh, this one here is called, oh, this is a sad one. This one is called Trafficked and it says a British girl miles from home 
The Man Who Said He Loved Her But Sold Her On The Streets and it's by Sophie Hayes and uh, it's a true story of a woman who I'm guessing was sold into human trafficking and so yeah really sad I don't know why but I read a lot of stories like this and they always get to me like they always make me really sad and so I don't know why I keep reading them but but I do I feel like they deserve to tell their story so there we go got that okay and oh I'm excited about this one this one is going straight on my priority list but sadly there's also about 5,000 other books on my priority list so yeah but this is going to be up there because it looks so good it's called Fear Itself and it's by Jonathan I want to say Nassau that's what I'm going to call him and it just looks it oh I'm so excited to read this one um it basically says uh, okay, it's got a lot of big words on the back. Uh, it basically says, uh, FBI Special Agent E.L. Pender is strapping on his non-regulation calfskin shoulder holster one last time, last day on the job. Then, a letter for Pender arrives at FBI headquarters. Dory Bell is afraid. Last year, she attended a phobia disorders convention in Las Vegas. Since then, three attendees have died in strange circumstances. Carl Pollander has acrophobia, not agrophobia, they are two different things. Agrophobia is the fear of small spaces, uh, no, is the fear of open spaces and acrophobia is the fear of heights. Claustrophobia is small spaces, I have that. Uh, okay, anyway, so, um, has acrophobia, fear of heights, so why would he have jumped from the 19th floor of a building? Mara Adjanian had haemophobia, fear of blood. So how could she have cut her own wrists in the bathtub? Kimberly Rosen had pnegophobia. Pen going with it. Fear of suffocation. She was fished out of a canal, but there was no water in her lungs. So I'm guessing she was suffocated and then shoved into the canal. Dory herself suffers from pros prosperponophobia, fear of masks. It says that on the back. I'm not being condescending. That's, that's literally, it does say that. <laughs> Um, she suspects there may be a twisted killer on the loose, someone who preys on people's first worst phobias, someone who, quite literally, enjoys scarring his victims to death. Dory's right, but she has no idea just how close to her the killer is. <gasps> I am so excited to read this, so excited to read this. Like, I thought this take took gory murder books to like a different kind of level, it's not just some guy sneaking into some woman's house and stabbing her to death. I mean, it, it just looks so good. So I'm excited to have that and it's going right up there on my priorities. Okay, and the next one is called The Dispossessed and it has a two pound sticker on it. I think that means it came from the British Heart Foundation. Most of their books are two pounds, but might be wrong. And it's, set, it's by Margaret Murphy and it's called The Dispossessed and it basically um, some poor guy was killed and the investigating guy gets brought into it basically and the reason I got this actually is because um, the cover on the front uh, it's two hands that are bound and usually when a cover's got something that kind of graphic on it it usually means that the book itself goes into some quite nitty gritty details and I really love that particularly with a gory murder book I don't know why I just do I like it I like to read that I like to go Ugh. I don't know why okay but that's what I like so that's why I got this but the only thing put me off is yes it's quite a short book but it's also quite thick and the writing is totey it is so small so I don't really like books with really small writing because I read a lot when I'm tired it's what I do to put myself to sleep and uh, I, it's just more difficult to read but hey ho I'm hoping the story will be good I'm hoping it goes into the nitty gritty because I like that okay uh, next one Stephen King cannot beat some Stephen King I am a huge Stephen King fan and it's full dark no stars and it says is it possible to fully know anyone even though it's we love the most. And apparently, I have a bonus short story. However, I am 
almost certain that this was turned into a book. It, this is a book. This was turned into a film, which is currently on Netflix. I'm sure I watched this the other day. Um, it says, what tips someone over the age to commit crime? For a Nebraska farmer, the turning point comes when his wife threatens to sell off the family homestead. It's not just me, right? That is a film on Netflix. A cosy mystery writer plots a savage revenge after a, revenge after a brutal encounter with a stranger. Harry Streeter gets the chance to cure himself from illness if he agrees to impose mystery on an old rival. And Darcy Anderson discovers a box containing her husband's dark and terrifying secrets. He is not just the man who keeps his nails short and collects coins. Now now he's heading home. So I don't know. I'm sure this was, this was a film. I don't really like to watch a film before I've read a book. And equally I refuse to watch a film after I've read a book. So, But I'll, I'll give it a shot because I might be wrong. But hey ho. And also I just love Stephen King. So got that. Okay. And let's see. This one I got and it's by PJ Tracy and it was 50 pence. I'm not sure where I got it from. Light blue sticker. Cancer research maybe? <gasps> It'll come to me. I'll remember the name of it at some point. But basically it's called Want to Play and it's by PJ Tracy. And it says want to play a game. Ooh, that's like a jigsaw. Anyway, Minneapolis, a brutally cold autumn and a killer is at work. Two bodies are found, two slayings that the police treat as unrelated, but games creator Grace McBride knows different. The murders are exact copies of those in a game she's designing, and one one that already has hundreds of eager players. As the copycat killings mount up, Grace knows she is both sub suspect and potential victim. And with the serial killer getting closer, she is drawn into a murderous game of cat and mouse. Want to play? So yeah, I got that. I thought that looked pretty cool. Uh, so it's very, it is very Jigsaw, isn't it? Um, Saw, that's what the film's called, Saw. I thought, I just thought it sounded cool. I thought it sounded funky. Okay, and um, what's this one? It's by Camilla Lackberg and it's called The Stranger. Not forgotten and never forgiven. And it's a picture of a locket on the front. And apparently she's Scandinavian. Um, okay, a local woman is killed in a car crash. It's a strange accident. The victim's blood contains high alcohol levels, but she rarely drank a drop. The case marks the end of a quiet winter for Detective Patrick Hedstrom. Meanwhile, a reality TV show begins shooting nearby, and as cameras show the stars, stars every move, tempers start to flare. When a drunken party ends with an unpopular contestant's murder, all eyes turn to the cast and crew. Could there be a mur murderer among them? The ratings spike as the country tunes into a real-life murder mystery. Under the unforgiving media spotlight, Patrick tackles his toughest investigation yet. So I thought that seemed pretty cool. Um, pretty weird though. I mean, I would have thought if in a reality show, if somebody is murdered, then the reality show just stops. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but it is just a story at the end of the day. So there we go. Okay, I'm trying to find some less gory, murdery things, but I feel like that's my, my niche. I feel like that's what I read most of, so I'm, I'm struggling here. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I still think it's gory murder, but that sentence at the front, it's called Say Goodbye, and it's by Lisa Gardner. And it says, he's going to make your skin crawl. Okay. Um, it's not really a description of the book on the back, but there's a lot of reviews. A twisted spellbinding thriller, Lisa Gardner always develops heart stopping suspense. Love a bit of suspense, love a bit of twistedness. I, I really, I need, I need to seek help, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Um, okay, this, oh, this isn't going to murder, okay. Uh, this is the mammoth book of haunted house stories. I like haunted things. I like paranormal things. So I got that. I thought that would be cool. And I think it's basically just telling the story of a bunch of haunted houses. Looks pretty cool. I like it. Me and Diane um, were meant to go to Edinburgh to do um, the City of the Dead tour because it has my favourite, favourite um, 
ghost story in it, the uh, the Mackenzie Poltergeist. Uh, I've I've been obsessed with the Mackenzie Poltergeist for years. So Deanne agreed to go with me, but then it got cancelled because it started snowing. So hoping we'll get that done when the weather starts getting a bit better. So yeah, that's just a little tidbit. So I've got that and it's edited by Peter Haining. But yeah, got that. Okay, and okay. Uh, right, I think I'll do one more book because I'm not really doing a good job of this video at all. Uh, so I'm not going to make it too long for here. Okay, and okay, this one. Uh, this one's by Martin Edwards and it's called The Coffin Trail. And it's a picture of a tree on the front. And it says, you can never bury the past. Oxford historian and TV personality Daniel Kind and his new lover Miranda both want to escape to a new life. On impulse, they buy Tarn Cottage in Brackdale, an idyllic valley in the Lake District. But though they hope to live the dream, the past has a way of catching up. When DCI Hannah Scarlet launches a cold case review into an old crime, Brackdale's skeletons start to rattle. Daniel and Hannah soon find themselves risking their life as they search for a ruthless killer who's prepared to murder again to hide a shocking secret. It's another gory murder book. I don't know what to tell you. That's what I like. I, I love reading gory murder books and mysteries and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, got them. And I'm really, really excited to read them. I have not done a very good job of this video, so I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, but it is late at night and uh, I'm tired, but I did not want to leave it too long before I sent out another video for you. So, because it's already been ages. So, yeah, there we go. And there is definitely enough books here for another video next time. And knowing me, I'll probably keep adding to it. This will be a never-ending thing. There'll just be a never-ending little pile of books sitting there waiting for me to show you. So... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'll get another um, book haul out soon. I'll probably do another video in between the book hauls just to spread them out a wee bit. Um, I did promise a smelly time video, a uh, smelly time, a smelly stuff video and uh, probably some Slim and Worldly videos as well because I need to get back on the Slim and World bandwagon. I am all kinds of off it. Uh, so yeah, so a couple more videos and then I'll stick up another book haul which will probably contain even more books probably more gory murder books because that's what i like and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye